Hello everyone, welcome to Current Affairs MCQ's program. Let's begin with previous day's practice question. Question was regarding the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act 1967. Consider the following statements. 1. The Act assigns absolute power to the central government by way of which, if the center deems an activity as unlawful, then it may, by way of an official gazette, declare it so. 2. It only applies to the Indian citizen. 3. Under the UAPA, the investigating agency can file a charge sheet in maximum of 180 days after the arrest and the duration can be extended further after intimating the court. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option B, only two. The Act assigns absolute power to the central government by way of which if the centre deems an activity as unlawful, then it may, by way of an official gazette, declare it so. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The UAPA applies to both Indian and foreign nationals, charging them similarly, even if the crime is committed outside India. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Under the UAPA, the investigating agency can file a charge sheet in maximum of 180 days after the arrest and the duration can be extended further after intimating the court. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Now, let's begin today's session. First question is, regarding the Public Accounts Committee, consider the following statements. 1. Its primary responsibility lies in auditing the reports provided by the Comptroller and Auditor General with the assistance of the CAG during investigations. 2. It consists of a maximum of 22 members with 15 elected by the Rajya Sabha and up to 7 members from the Lok Sabha. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option A, 1 only. Its primary responsibility lies in auditing the reports provided by the Comptroller and Auditor General with the assistance of the CAG during investigations. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The PAC consists of a maximum of 22 members with 15 elected by the Lok Sabha and up to 7 members from the Rajya Sabha. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Members are chosen annually through proportional representation via a single transferable vote. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements. Statement 1. The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 implements the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities ratified by India in 2007. Statement 2. Recently, the Central Public Works Department has prioritized improving accessibility for persons with disabilities in public buildings. Which one of the following is correct in respect of the above statements? Both statements are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. Both statements are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. Statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect or statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct. The correct answer is option B. Both statements are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 implements the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities ratified by India in 2007. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Recently, the Central Public Works Department has prioritized improving accessibility for persons with disabilities in public buildings. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Therefore, option B is correct because both statements are correct. But statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. Next question is regarding the Election Commission of India. Consider the following statements. 1. The Constitution has prescribed the qualifications of the members of the Election Commission. 2. The Commission has not specified the term of the members of the Election Commission. 3. The Constitution has not debarred the retiring Election Commissioners from any further appointment by the government. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The correct answer is option B, only two. The Election Commission of India is an autonomous constitutional authority responsible for administering union and state election processes in India. The body administers elections to the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and state legislative assemblies in India and the offices of the President and Vice President in the country. The Constitution has not prescribed the qualifications, legal, educational, administrative or judicial of the members of the Election Commission. Hence, Statement 1 is not correct. The Constitution has not specified the term of the members of the Election Commission. Hence, Statement 2 is correct. The Constitution has not debarred the retiring Election Commissioners from any further appointment by the government. Hence, Statement 3 is correct. Therefore, Option B is the correct answer. 
Next question is regarding the India-Indonesia relations. Consider the following statements. One, Indonesia has emerged as the largest trading partner of India in the ASEAN region. Two, both countries are members of G20, East Asia Summit and the United Nations. Three, the stories from the great epics of Ramayana and Mahabharat form a source of Indonesian folk art and dramas. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option B, only two. Indonesia has emerged as the second largest trading partner of India in the ASEAN region. Hence, statement 1 is not correct. Since India adopted the Look East policy in 1991, there has been rapid development in bilateral relations. Both countries are members of G20, East Asia Summit and the United Nations. Hence, statement 2 is correct. The Hindu, Buddhist and later Muslim faiths travelled to Indonesia from the shores of India. The stories from the great epics of Ramayana and Mahabharat form a source of Indonesian folk art and dramas. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements. Statement 1. Multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology originated in the erstwhile USSR with the deployment of a MIRV intercontinental ballistic missile in 1970. Statement 2. MIRV technology enhances the missile's effectiveness by increasing the number of potential targets it can engage. Which one of the following is correct in respect of the above statements? Both statements are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. Both statements are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. Statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect or statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct. The correct answer is option D. Statement 1 is incorrect, but statement 2 is correct. India has made a significant advancement in missile technology, joining the select group of nations possessing multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle capabilities. MIRV technology originated in the United States with the deployment of a MIRV intercontinental ballistic missile in 1970. Hence, statement 1 is not correct. MIRV allows a single missile to carry multiple warheads, 3 to 4, each capable of targeting different locations independently. Hence, statement 2 is correct. MIRV technology enhances the missile's effectiveness by increasing the number of potential targets it can engage. MIRVs can be launched from both land-based platforms and sea-based platforms, such as submarines, expanding their operational flexibility and range. Therefore, option D is correct because statement 1 is incorrect, but statement 2 is correct. Next question is closing the Women's Health Gap Report was released by which of the following? World Economic Forum, World Health Organization, World Bank or International Monetary Fund? The correct answer is option A, World Economic Forum. Closing the Women's Health Gap, a $1 trillion opportunity to improve lives and economies, was released by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with McKinsey Health Institute. The report addresses the root causes of the women's health gap focused on science, data, care, delivery and investment and charts several ways forward to close this gap from incentivizing new financing models to investing in women-centric research and implementing more inclusive health policies. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is regarding wildlife protection licensing additional matters for consideration rules 2024. Consider the following statements. 1. The new guidelines eliminate licensing restrictions for trading in Schedule 2 species allowing for easier approval without central government consultation. 2. The new guidelines prohibit granting licenses for Schedule 1 wild animals without prior consultation with the central government maintaining restrictions on highly protected species like tigers, elephants and rhinos. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. The new guidelines eliminate licensing restrictions for trading in Schedule 2 species allowing for easier approval without central government consultation. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The new guidelines prohibit granting licenses for Schedule 1 wild animals without prior consultation with the central government, maintaining restrictions on highly protected species like tigers, elephants and rhinos. Hence, Statement 2 is correct. The new rules outline factors for authorized officers to consider when granting licenses, including applicant capacity, supply source and manner, existing licenses and impacts on the hunting or trade of wild animals. Therefore, Option C is the correct answer. 
Next question is consider the following statements. One, Kerala has recently declared man-animal conflict as a state-specific disaster. Two, the forest department is responsible for managing human-wildlife conflict in accordance with the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Three, when a state-specific disaster is declared, the State Disaster Management Authority, empowered by the Disaster Management Act 2005, takes swift and decisive action. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option C, all three. Kerala has recently declared man-animal conflict as a state-specific disaster. Hence, statement one is correct. The forest department is responsible for managing human-wildlife conflict in accordance with the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Hence, statement two is correct. When a state-specific disaster is declared, the State Disaster Management Authority, empowered by the Disaster Management Act, 2005 takes swift and decisive action. Hence, statement 3 is correct. At the state level, the chief minister is the ex officio chairman of the body and several departments, including the forest department, are stakeholders. In the district, the district disaster management authority is headed by the district collector, who is also the executive magistrate. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following pairs, national park and state. 1. Jim Corbett National Park, Uttarakhand 2. Kono National Park, Gujarat 3. Raimona National Park, Uttar Pradesh Which of the pairs given above is or are correctly matched? 1 only, 1 and 2 only, 2 and 3 only or 1, 2 and 3? The correct answer is option A, 1 only. Jim Corbett National Park is a national park in India located in the Nanital district of Uttarakhand state. Hence, pair 1 is correctly matched. Kono National Park is a national park and wildlife sanctuary in Madhya Pradesh, India. Hence, pair 2 is not correctly matched. And Raimona National Park is located in the extreme western part of Assam, India. Hence, pair 3 is not correctly matched. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Last question is regarding you when consider the following statements. 1. You win a program digitizing India's universal immunization program is launched in pilot mode in two districts per state and union territory. 2. You win will serve as the central hub for immunization services, including vaccination status updates, delivery outcomes, planning of RI sessions, and reports on antigen wise coverage. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. You win a program digitizing India's universal immunization program is launched in pilot mode in two districts per state and union territory. Hence, statement 1 is correct. UOWIN will serve as the central hub for immunization services, including vaccination status updates, delivery outcomes, planning of RI sessions, and reports on antigen-wise coverage. Hence, statement 2 is correct. The platform will register and vaccinate pregnant women, record delivery outcomes, register newborns, administer birth doses, and manage all vaccination events. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Now is the time for practice question. Consider the following statements. 1. The South China Sea lies south of China, bordered by Myanmar, China, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam. 2. China's 9 dashed line originally and 11 dashed line until 1953 delineates its sea claims extending up to 2000 km from the mainland near the Philippines, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, or neither 1 nor 2. Send the answer of this question in the comment section. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching. For more informative content, like, share, and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.